stumble and fall. Though an army encamp against me, my heart would not fear. Though war broke breaks out against me, even then would I trust. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Whom should I dread? When those who do evil draw near, they stumble and fall. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Whom should I dread? When those who do evil draw near, they stumble and fall. Good morning. Welcome to Christ the Divine Shepherd Parish. Thank you for being here with us today. Today is the 10th Sunday in Ordinary Time, Year B. Our readings may be found at number 956 in the Missal. Please silence all electronic devices in respect for the sanctity of the liturgy. Now let us sing number 589. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And the Lord be with you. With the, Spirit. The, the Lord is always with us, and he's on our side. He's our advocate. Uh, we can trust God as we now pause and call to mind our sins. 
Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy upon us, forgive us our sin, and bring us to life, life everlasting. From whom all good things come, grant that we who call on you in our need may at your prompting discern what is right, and by your guidance do it through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Genesis. After the man, Adam, had eaten of the tree, the Lord God called to the man and asked him, where are you? He answered, I heard you in the garden, but I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid myself. Then he asked, who told you that you were naked? You have eaten then from the tree of which I had forbidden you to eat. The man replied, the woman whom you have put here with me, she gave me the fruit from the tree, and so I ate it. The Lord God then asked the woman, why did you do such a thing? The woman answered, a serpent tricked me into it, so I ate it. Then the Lord God said to the serpent, because you have done this, you shall be banned from all the animals and from all the wild creatures. On your belly shall you crawl, and dirt you shall eat all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and hers. He will strike at your head while you strike at his heel. The word of the Lord. Our psalm is number 107. Show. 
depths I cry to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to my voice in supplication. With the If you, O Lord, mark iniquities, Lord, who can stand? But with you is forgiveness, that you may be revered. With the Lord there is mercy. I trust in the Lord, my soul trust in his word, more than sentinels wait for the dawn, let Israel wait for the Lord. With the For with the Lord is kindness, and with him is plenteous redemption, and he will redeem Israel from all their iniquities. With the A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, since we have the same spirit of faith according to what is written, I believed, therefore I spoke. We too believe, and therefore we speak, knowing that the one who raised the Lord Jesus will raise us also with Jesus and place us with you in his presence. Everything indeed is for you so that the grace bestowed in abundance on more and more people may cause the thanksgiving to overflow for the glory of God. Therefore, we are not discouraged. Rather, although our outer self is wasting away, our inner self is being renewed day by day. For this momentary light affliction is producing us for us an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison. As we look not to what is seen, but to what is unseen. For what is seen is transitory, but what is unseen is eternal. For we know that if our earthly dwelling, a tent, should be destroyed, we have a building from God, a dwelling not made with hands, eternal in heaven. The word of the Lord.
And the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus came home with his disciples. Again, the crowd gathered, making it impossible for them even to eat. When his relatives heard of this, they set out to seize Jesus, for they said, he's out of his mind. The scribes who had come from Jerusalem said, he's possessed by Beelzebul, and by the prince of demons, he drives out demons. Summoning them, Jesus began to speak to them in parables. How can Satan drive out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house is divided against itself, that house will not be able to stand. And if Satan has risen up against himself and is divided, he cannot stand. That is the end of him. But no one can enter a strong man's house to plunder his property unless he first ties up the strong man. Then he can plunder the house. Amen, I say to you. All sins and all blasphemies that people utter will be forgiven them. But whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit will never have forgiveness, but is guilty of everlasting sin. For they had said, Jesus has an unclean spirit. His mother and brothers arrived. Standing outside, they sent word to him and called him. A crowd seated around him told him, Your mother, your brothers and sisters are outside looking for you. Jesus said to them, Who are my mother and my brothers? And looking around at those seated in the circle, he said, Here are my mother and my brothers. For whoever does the will of God is brother and sister and mother. The Gospel of the Lord. Our beloved Father Jeremy Moeller is going to be heading back to his own diocese where he grew up in Altoona, Johnstown. Uh, after a lot of discernment, uh, Father came to a clarity. It's in the bulletin, and I think his last days will be in the July of some, so, uh, some time. Um, uh, we had that magnificent uh, Sacred Heart Mass Saturday evening an all-night adoration. If, if at times you're just beside yourself with this world and just don't know what to do, I would just invite you to come a little early and just spend time before Jesus Christ, truly present in the Eucharist, and pour out your heart. That's what my spiritual director told me to do, and it's been very, very helpful. Jesus Christ, true, present. Uh, yesterday, uh, or yeah, yesterday at the evening mass, there was that we have what's called the seven sisters and the fasting uh, brothers, who pray for characters like me. If you knew me better, you'd know how desperately this guy needs the prayers, and I do. But for priests, bishops, and deacons, so I'd like to thank all the seven sisters, the fasting brothers, for for their commitment of of prayer. Uh, just one other thing. This is commercial time, a little commercial break. Uh, and that is Mother Teresa of Calcutta formed a lay society of, of her missionaries of charity, uh, uh, Jean uh, Marie uh, uh, Farina from our parish has been committed there, uh, committed to that. So yesterday, in a sense, we had like a, a little honoring of of their commitment to, to the Lord and to Mother Teresa and her, uh, her order. Now, please don't count that as my, my homily time, Jack. Uh, Jack, uh, Jack takes down notes from one to 10. I, I haven't gotten above a seven yet, so I'm working at it. Have you ever felt rejected by the people that you love? Have you ever felt rejected by the people you love? Well, if you have, you're in good company. 
The sacred scriptures this Sunday show what Jesus went through in his own hometown, and they offer us a valuable perspective. In St. Mark's Gospel, Jesus hears some criticism and name-calling that is downright blasphemous, with relatives claiming that the Son of God is out of his mind. Uh, but one phrase really struck me, and you could easily miss it, but if you look closely, it comes at the very beginning of this excerpt of St. Mark's Gospel. It says, Jesus came home. Jesus came home. These simple words are filled with meaning, and by the end of the message, Christ has redefined what it means to be home and challenges his listeners to reconsider what it means to be family, home and family. Before that, though, Jesus encounters accusations that are more than a little bit shocking. He's accused of being possessed, of using, uh, of using the prince of demons to drive out demons. His neighbors and relatives, uh, in effect, call him a madman or just down nuts. Just nuts. A little, little side note. A friend of mine is a nurse. The doctor put some notes in, in the, the patient's uh, uh, case log, and he put this JPN, and the nurse said, well, what is that, doctor? I've never learned that in hospital language or nursing school. Just plain nuts. <laughs> just plain. Well, they thought Jesus was just plain, he was nuts. Uh, but Jesus, he doesn't recall, uh, respond with any uh, shock or outrage it seems like he's not even offended. Jesus chooses to move in another way, think in a different direction, explaining who it is, who he is, with charity and clarity, reason, authority, and wisdom. You might even say Jesus speaks out of love. So then when his family comes looking for him, he doesn't turn his attention to them. He looks instead to those who are surrounding him those who are seated in the circle, the gospel tells us, listening to his words. Uh, what he says may have left them startled, maybe even scandalized. Who are my mother and brothers? Here are my mother and my brothers. For whoever does the will of God is brother and sister and mother. Who's my family? Whoever does the will of God. Unexpectedly, then just in a very few words, Jesus offers a new a sense of belonging, of describing what it makes, what it means to be a part of, of, of the Christian community, the Catholic community. Here's a new definition, if you will, of family by extension, a new way of looking about home. Um, family, in the teaching of Jesus, is more than just a matter of genetics or geography. It's not just a shared history. It encompasses so much more than the people you call your relative. The Christian family goes beyond our blood. Being part of Jesus' family then means, like Jesus, we're obedient to God's will. God comes first. God comes first. God, not an idea, but a reality, if you will. God is fire. God is relationship. God is person, the person of the Father, the person of the Son, the person of the Holy Spirit who desires to make his home within each of us. Doing God's will, it means trusting in the Father who loves us. If I stop now, which I won't, <laughs> if we dare to believe that God loves us, uh, you know, turn the lights out. God loves you, God loves me. That he loves us and he nourishes us. That the Father who desires nothing more he desires nothing more than to spend eternity with you. And he sent his son to help make that possible. So when each of us say, I hope I get to heaven, well, God more than hopes. He, he pours out his blood. He, he, he empties himself. He, he's doing, God is presently doing everything that God can to draw us in uh, to himself, his sacred heart. Uh, it's incredible. It, it means embracing the Son is our brother, living with fidelity to God's teaching and with a hope and a life yet to come in a place that we can only imagine. 
Like this isn't the bottom line. This isn't it. Uh, who is it? Pearl Bailey said, I've been rich and I've been poor and I like being rich a lot better. Uh, you know, wherever we find ourselves, we're just passing through. We're just passing through. And that destination, that eternity, that's our home, to be with the living God. So this episode, this gospel, in some way foreshadows uh, the Christian persecution that will come and the kind of rejection of Christ's message that will eventually lead him to Calvary. Uh, Jesus owes, tells us that following his path is not easy. Even in the place you call home, they called him crazy, out of his mind, if you will, nuts. And so what is the message? Don't seek acceptance in this world, but plan instead for the next. That St. Ignatius tells us that we human beings are made to praise and reverence the Lord our God and to play our own role in the Paschal mystery. You know, we're, we're on a mission. Yeah. It's a timely message. We can't forget that in some parts of our globe today, to be a follower of Jesus is to live with a target on your back, being marginalized, pushed to the side. They're mocked, persecuted, imprisoned, even killed. The age of martyrdom has not ended. We just have to look to the news. But in this Sunday's sacred scripture, calls us to embrace being part of the Christian family, uh, to remember that we're meant for other things, that we belong elsewhere. And where is that? Doing the will of God. And so as I'm moving towards conclusion, in Sunday's uh, second reading, St. Paul explains it rather perfectly. He writes in his letter to the Corinthians that we should look not to what is seen, but to what is unseen. Not what is seen, but unseen. The unseen world is the real world. We're just passing. It's the unseen world. Uh, and so, indeed, we may give some place else as our address, mine 200 Stotler Road, but there's another place and that is truly our home, and that is with the Lord Jesus in the kingdom of God. Uh, we belong to him. He belongs to us. Uh, welcome home. I believe in one God. Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified in the conscious fire. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, again in glory to have the living in the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit. Who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We have our own desires and needs. And our Father desires to listen to us as we lift them up. Please respond, Lord, hear our prayer. For the church, that Christ continues to guide her steps as she brings the message of salvation to all. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For people throughout the world, may God open their hearts to receive his word. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have wandered from the faith, may God's grace guide them back into his loving arms. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For this community gathered here, 
May God help us to have eyes to see and ears to hear those in need. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our For all who have died marked as Christ's own forever, especially Samuel Adorano, may God welcome them to his eternal kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. For the repose of the souls of Joseph, Mildred, and Joseph Jr. Regafor, for which this Mass is offered, let us pray to the Lord. Fathers, we celebrate, have celebrated the Sacred Heart of Jesus on Friday. Uh, we ask that our hearts may beat in concert with yours, that we may be about your will, your thinking, your desires, your hopes and dreams for us. Help us to walk in the heart of the Immaculate Heart of Mary, we celebrate it on Saturday, so that we could be your true servants. We ask this in indeed in the name of Jesus the Lord, but we ask also Mary our Mother to watch over us as we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary. Give light to my eyes, lest I fall asleep in death, lest my enemies say I have overcome him. Our hymn is number 557. <clears throat> And together we pray that my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God, our Father Almighty. Look kindly upon our service, O Lord, that what we offer may be acceptable oblation to you and lead us to grow in charity through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. 
it is truly right and just that we should give you thanks and praise, O God, Almighty Father, for all you do in this world through our Lord Jesus Christ. For though the human race is divided by dissension and discord, yet we know that by testing us you change our hearts and prepare them for reconciliation even more. By your Spirit you move human hearts, that enemies may speak to one another again, adversaries join hands, and people seek to meet together. By the working of your power it comes about, O Lord, that hatred is overcome by love, revenge gives way to forgiveness, discord is changed to mutual respect. Therefore we, we give you ceaseless thanks. We cry out to your majesty on earth and without, and we acclaim. <laughs> Almighty Father, we bless you through Jesus Christ, your Son, who has come in your name. He himself is the word that brings salvation, the hand you extend to sinners. Jesus is the way that leads to peace. When we ourselves had turned away from you on account of our sins, you brought us back to be reconciled, O Lord, so that converted at last to you, that we might love one another through your Son, who for our sake you handed over to death. And so now, celebrating the reconciliation that Christ has brought us, we entreat you, sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your Spirit, that they may become the body, the blood of your Son, whose command we fulfill when we celebrate these mysteries. For when about to give his life to set us free, as he reclined at supper, he himself took bread in his hands, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, on that same evening, he took the chalice of blessing in his hands, confessing your mercy. He gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this. Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant. It will be poured out for you, for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, save
celebrating, therefore, the memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son, who left us this pledge of his love, we offer you what you have bestowed upon us, this sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. Holy Father, we humbly beseech you, accept us together with your Son, and in this saving banquet, graciously endow us with his very spirit, who takes away everything that estranges us from one another. And may he make your church a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace. And may he keep us in communion with Francis, our Pope, David, our Bishop, with all the bishops, with your entire people. And just as you've gathered us now at the table of your Son, so also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, with all of the saints, with our brothers and sisters, and those of every race and tongue who have died in your friendship, bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity in a new heaven and new earth, where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Christ Jesus our Lord. Through him, with him, in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, formed by divine teachings, we dare to say, Our Father. And deliver us, Lord, from every evil, and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin. Protect us from anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace. My peace I give you. Look not on our sin, but on the faith of the church and grant us the peace, the unity of the kingdom where you live forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always, Amen. with your spirit. We offer a sign of peace. Papa. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb.
My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. and my deliverer. My God is my saving strength. I cry out, oh praised be the Lord, and see I am saved from my foes. The Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer. My God is my saving strength. In my anguish I call to the Lord. I cry to my God for help. From his temple he heard my voice. My cry to him reached his ears. The Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer. My God is my saving strength. For you save a lowly people, but bring low the eyes that are proud. The Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer. My God is my saving strength. Glory be to the Father and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer. My God is my saving strength. Our hymn is number 798.
May your healing work, O Lord, free us, we pray, from doing evil, and lead us to what is right through Christ our Lord. Yes. Announcements. A six-week structured, structured bereavement support group will begin Thursday, June the 13th. I believe that's the Feast of St. Anthony. Uh, contact Deacon Mike if interested. Uh, Father Faustine is here now. Uh, he's doing a mission appeal. He will be at Masses here on June the 22nd and 23rd. I've talked with him a couple of times. Uh, Father Faustine and I lived at St. Bart's together. He was always working. He, he was always working. Uh, daughter, Dr. Peter Kreeft will be in our parish the weekend of June 29th and 30th. He will be speaking after the 4 p.m. Mass on the 29th about Eucharistic revival, and after the 11 a.m. Mass on the 30th about how we talk about our faith. Peter Kreeft is worth going to listen. Blow everything else off. <laughs> uh, he's really worth it. Yeah, he can blow me off. And the Lord be with you. May the Almighty God bless us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We go in the joy of the risen Christ. Thanks be to God. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in the aggression against the wickedness and the snares of the devil. May God with you him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of Heavenly Hope, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits that prowl about the world, seeking to lure the souls. Amen. Are you ready? Salve Regina, Mater Misericordiae, Vita Dote, Do, Ex Pes Nostra Sol. 